Well, hey guys, what's up? What's going on out there today? Hey, good morning. Brent Abel here at webtennis.com with another episode of What's the Right Shot? And I uh, hope you guys are having a great day so far wherever you are. Yeah, here in the California desert, Southern California desert to be exact, uh, Rancho Mirage, the Mission Hills Country Club. And uh, let's get to it. What I've got for you today is, um, in fact, let me do this. Let me get here. There you go. Um, what I got for you today is a point from uh, the Avery Cup, which is a competition between, whoa, hold on, hold on just a sec. We got a little bit extra volume there we don't need. Uh, Avery Cup from, it's a called an international club competition from uh, the Berkeley Tennis Club. This is uh, USA versus uh, England eh, a few years ago. Paul Wolf with the shot choice there. We're going to get into today's episode in just a second. A couple of reminders every day, 8 o'clock. Could be pre-recorded or live as we are today. What's the right shot? And then the afternoons, yeah, yeah, some mindset training. So here's the point. And I'm going to stop it right before Paul has to play this shot right here and ask you, you know, yeah, I mean, you're, you're pulled in short to the court. You effectively got both opponents up there at net. And so what's your shot choice, right? Paul is known for this shot over here, taking this forehand and just rolling it over here. And when I say roll, it's not a big heavy topper, right? It's it's rolling in terms of if it's got a little bit of shape to it. It's got some top, a little bit of upspin, but it's not, not crazy. The beauty of it is, is it gets there quickly. And uh, so sometimes if you want to roll this ball over to that, over that cross court corner, you got to be careful not to put so much spin on it that it kind of hangs up. And that if it doesn't get really over there past the guy, then if, if it, if it does get over, it's going to, it's, I should say it's going to sit up in the air, but it's also from the bounce is going to sit up as well sometimes. So, you know, their shot choice is, this is kind of tricky. Play it down at the guy's feet, just get it down in front of your partner you know, you have to kind of cut this a little bit. You can't really roll it. Suppose you could, but most of us can't do that and get it down in that short of a distance. The other thing is a lob here, right? You could lob. So I'm going to take this back a little bit because one thing I want you to look at with Paul's strokes are, number one, is let's look at how efficient, sorry, here we go, uh, at how efficient this return, this backhand return is, right? Got a nice shoulder turn to it. This is a little kind of a tricky part with the right-handed player playing the deuce side in doubles is this backhand return getting sideways. And look, um, Paul doesn't do much here, right? He just kind of borrows the pace from the incoming serve. And if you look at where this serve lands, this is a pretty good serve, right? It's got a little bit of depth. Where's it land? It lands right there. Yeah, I mean, that's that's depth, right? So if you go too far back with this with a racket prep, uh, it's tough to time it. You got a lot of swing, pre pre-contact swing to come into it. That's not easy. So I love what Paul does here, gets the shoulder turn, and just basically just bunts it back with a little bit of a, I don't know what you call the finish, but that's not that's not really the key here. The key is that it's a short backswing. And in his own way, he just pushes it back, makes sure it gets back to that returner and can't really get in behind it. So now he's going to play his forehand. Now look, again, short, compact, backswing. There's nothing going on here. He's just putting the racket behind the eventual contact point and, and getting through it. I think we looked at something he played the other day. We also looked at a Larry Turville forehand where both these guys prep is unbelievably compact. And yet right now the swing speed is just really, it goes right. And, and so there you have it. Now look, short ball, he's coming in. What's he going to play here? Yeah, he's going to play a little lob. And I think that in, it's a great shot, right? It's well inside the baseline over there. I think, though, that to play this, you can't go to the well too often on it. 
And I, I don't remember what led up to this point right here, but in reality, you've got to you've got to show that opponent opponent uh, maybe once or twice to train them to think that either that little shove cross court or maybe just a little chip down at the feet and move in is a strong possibility, so that this gets disguised. Because if you open the racket face too early here, both guys know it over there, and then you just kind of give it a push. You assume it's going to be good. You come in and there you go. There you go. So look down below. Uh, let me know what's on your mind. Any questions, any comments, any remarks, any feedback in the comments area, let me know. And I'd love to read it and respond to you. If you want to keep it private, just shoot me an email. Brent at webtennis.com. I'm going to play this in real time for you. Let's actually go back and look this without me yak attack on it. And we'll just play this thing in real time. Easy peasy, right? No big deal. Um, that is something that the better players have a tendency to do, is make it look easy. And the reason for that is there's not a lot of complicated swing tech, right? It's all, it's all short backswing and a lot of disguise, and it just looks simple. So, guys, look, if you love the stuff we're doing, uh, click that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, click that notification bell so you're always notified, alerted every time I go live and or upload recorded videos for you. Guys, that's it for me today. It's time to get out there. Got to help someone else have a great day. Guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. And uh, yeah, see you again next time.